Well, the update for today is I got super lucky um, a few days ago looking on eBay. I came across the um, um, one of the seat belts listed on eBay, and I noticed that it was the location was about 30 minutes away from me. Um, so I checked the seller's other items, and they had just started parting out another 2016 Sport. Um, it was hit in the back, so all of the safety stuff was fine. So I went over there and picked up uh, both seat belts, uh, the driver and passenger airbag, a complete driver's seat, and the dash. And it came with um, all of the lower pieces, which I don't need, so I can resell those. And it also came with a, a driver's headlight, which is in very good condition. So I lucked out there. I ended up saving $1,800 buying these used parts versus um, buying new stuff at the dealer. The parts car was hit in the back though. So I'm, this, the driver's seat appears to be okay, but I'm a little bit worried that the recline mechanism might be a little stressed from the rear end collision. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull the cushion pull the upper cushion, the cover, and the airbag and swap it onto my seat frame just to be safe. And then I'm, I'm fixing a drivability issue while I'm replacing the dash. Uh, the 2016s do not have a telescoping steering wheel and uh, being a little bit on the tall side, the, when, when I have the seat in a good place for my legs, my arms are sticking straight out. So I went to the dealer and ordered a, a new steering column for a 2019 and in 2019 they added a telescope to the tilt column um, looking around on the forums you only need two things to do the swap the steering column and the upper trim piece which if we compare it to the old one you can see that it's a couple inches longer well, maybe not a couple inches, but inch and a half or so. Um, those are the only two things you need to swap it. And since I'm going to have 90% of the interior apart, it'll be easy to, to throw that in. Uh, so the plan today, and tomorrow most likely, is to swap out all of the blown interior parts. Um, I got started today earlier today because I had to check and see if there were I had to check and see if I needed some other parts for the steering column before I ran over to the dealer so I did that real quick um, and this is super easy to take apart it's just two screws and the column comes apart um, a 21 millimeter nut for the steering wheel and at least in my case I didn't need a puller I just wiggled it back and forth and pulled on it and it popped off um, and then the switches just clip in. Let's see. So there's just pretty much a tab right here you push and then they pop out on either side. Um, the only minor irritation is uh, these shear bolts. There's two shear bolts here and, and when it's installed they're sandwiched by this plate. Um, it looks like they're Phillips head screws and then they solder over them. Um, I don't know if it's a security thing or what, but I just took a Dremel and made a slot in the top of it and took a straight screwdriver and unscrewed them. And I'm just gonna reuse them. There's nothing, nothing wrong with them. They haven't been sheared off or anything. Um, but yeah, we'll just start tearing it apart, take out the seats, take out some of the back trim to get to the seat belts. That's not, I don't think I have to take the whole thing out. So I can pull this, kind of pull this back and get to the screws in here. Um, or the bolts in there. To get the seatbelt out and then there's a couple bolts down at the bottom. And then, got to take out most of the console. And then the lower parts of the dash. Uh, and then the center stack comes out next. And then... At some point you get to the screws, like there's one, and there's another one under this piece, and there's a couple more hidden in the center stack for taking the upper dash out. Um, 
So between some YouTube videos and just figuring it out as I go, we'll get all of this tore apart and back together. Right, we got the passenger side seatbelt in and it went pretty easy. Only minor hiccup was that somebody had been poking around in here. Both of the um, upper upper plugs were disconnected and some of the push pins are missing. Um, and when they took this one out, they broke the connector. But luckily, um, I was worried I was gonna have to splice it in, but luckily these come up, these come apart easily. You just flip up, you just flip up the back of it and pull the terminals out of it and swap it over. Uh, the the used seatbelt that I bought came with the connector, so that was a quick swap. Um, so now I'll just put the trim in and swap out the other side. I got the driver's side in. Um, the trim piece is in the trunk and I have the battery disconnected, so I'll have to get that later. So the next thing, I guess we'll start tackling the dash. Uh, from the videos I saw online on YouTube, um, pretty much 90% of this dash is held together with um, clips. Pretty much just grab a hold of shit, give it a yank, and it comes apart. Uh, there's a couple screws in here and a couple screws up there. And I might have to refresh my memory with um, some of the YouTube videos, but yeah, it's pretty much just a bunch of screws and clips. And it should come out hopefully pretty easy. We'll see. All right, well, it's out. Not in the most delicate way, but it is out. Um, so after giving it a yank to get it the rest of the way out, um, it appears that this upper duct is screwed in from the back side, and these little tabs ripped off. They're also screwed in from the back side. Those go to the upper dash. So it looks like I'm going to have to unbolt the cross car beam. There's looks like two bolts on each side. They're underneath these plugs. And um, hopefully I can hopefully I can tip the, the metal beam backwards so that I can unscrew the duct. And I also need to get back there to replace this airbag harness. I've got a replacement. And then while I'm at it, I'll pull out the uh, steering column. That's just four bolts. So otherwise it didn't really come out that bad. Again, 90% of it is clips. And then I think there are maybe 10 screws on the front side. And then everything else just unclips and comes off. So that'll be the next step, seeing if I can, hopefully I can get to, get to those bolts with the doors on. So otherwise that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a big headache.
Well, here's where we are now. I did have to unbolt the cross car beam and move it because the, um, the defroster duct has a bolt here that comes in from the back side, as well as a screw point uh, uh, right there. The screw point there, and then there's a screw point here and over there that go into the back side of the instrument panel. So hopefully, I'll put down a moving blanket and then hopefully I can put the uh, put the dash on it and screw it down with it just sitting there. Otherwise I'll have to, I think the only thing holding it now are a few, uh, a few plugs going to the, going down the tunnel. Um, but yeah, that's the, the defrost duct and to get it out I just gave it a yank and so ripped it off there there and there um, the other the other uh, dash has that piece so I just need to get it back in there it's a little more involved than I wanted it to be but it's still still has only taken an hour and a half or so it's not too bad now I just need to get it back together before I forget how it goes and where all of the uh, screws and nuts are. Alright, I've got the dash ready to go back in. Got the airbag installed. It's just a bracket there and a bracket there and two screws and it clips down in. It hooks on to the under the chute channel here so that um, in this case when it deploys the hooks catch on catch on the plastic so that it can't um, so that the the dash can't fly away so hopefully I took the I took the defrost channel out so that should allow me access to these two screw points with the dash on it and then I can put the defrost duct on and it has three screws along the top. And then hopefully I can rotate the um, cross car beam back into place and bolt everything back up, plug everything back in. And hopefully it won't be, hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, I did replace, here's the airbag harness the little jumper that goes from the main dash harness out to the airbag. So I had to replace that because the, um, the connectors were melted. I can see that on the, on the old one. The inflator gets really hot and just kind of melts them into the, um, kind of just melts it into the inflator. So um, at least Mazda is nice enough to give you the little jumper harness that you can replace instead of having to replace the whole dash harness. I made some progress. I've got the dash screwed onto the cross car beam now and it should be ready to go back in. This might be a little bit tricky trying to get it rotated up, rotated up in the car position and then pushed forward. Um, I don't know, we'll see. And over here we've got our pile of parts. It should go back together there's really only one way you can go back together, so it shouldn't be that difficult just to bolt everything in, plug everything in.
right, I got everything in and snugged down. So it's just a matter of clipping all of the dash parts in it. Um, I've got the new steering column in and it does tilt and telescope. So that should be really helpful for getting in a more comfortable spot to drive. Um, I was hoping to put the whole, all of this back part together, but I located the restraint control module and it's obviously in the back behind all of that trim. So I have to take everything apart. I won't be able to put that back together. I won't be able to put the console back together until I get the um, control module flash to clear the, um, clear the crash code. But in the meantime, I can get the seats back in it and finish up the dash and should be on the way. So I've got the dash pretty much in, the eight pillars in. I'm working on the steering column now, finishing that up. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you happen to be upgrading to a telescoping steering wheel, you can't clip any of the wire, any of the wire harness or the big white block that's in the back. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that block right there. So it's supposed to, on non-telescoping wheels, it has a tab that attaches here, um, but uh, the harness isn't long enough to allow the movement forward and back. So if you just leave it and this harness loose, um, then the steering column can move up and down and in and out without any issues. And one other thing to keep in mind when you uh, pull the steering wheel off, make sure you tape the um, the clock spring so it doesn't move. So you don't want it to end up 90 degrees and then you don't know, do I turn another 90 degrees left or right? So you can really throw it off. So just a piece of tape and that'll hold it. Pretty much all back together now. Got the steering wheel airbag in and if I can find the lever and the tilt tilt and telescope works good. I didn't expect any issues. Um, so the only thing I have to do I've got to get the strain control module out and send that off. Um, so I won't put the console back together yet. I can put the seats in it. I can move them far enough forward that I can get the back trim in when it's ready. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, like I mentioned before, the car that the good seat came out of was rear-ended and I'm a little hesitant to use, use the seat as is just because it was rear-ended and it may have damage the recline mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and replace, um, so I'm going to replace the, the airbag module and the upper seat cushion um, with the one from this seat and I'll just scrap the rest of the seat just uh, just to be safe.
All right, got everything swapped over. It's a pretty quick and easy job. And everything looks good. Fabric is tight where it's supposed to be. Nothing weird looking. Got the airbag swapped over. And we can take a look at the, at the naked seat. Um, so the airbag module just mounts in these two holes. And it's folded up and kind of just in a roll there. Um, you can see you've got your foam bolsters here, another little piece of foam back here, and even the base model Mazdas give you speakers for the driver and the headrest. And if we look at the cover itself, so you've got little hooks here and plastic, um, it's like a plastic strip here, so all you do is just push push it under and then it hooks over, over top of the outside edge of it. The overall, pretty simple, simple design and it's simple, simple to change cushions and covers. Alright, now that I've got the cushion swapped over, I'm going to go ahead and pull the restraint control module and then I'll put the seats back in it and that'll probably be about it for the day. Uh, so the interior is back together except the center console and the trim behind the seats. Um, I'm sending out the restraint control module to be flashed to clear the crash code. Uh, so that'll hopefully be in by um, by the end of next week. And this is really only, I think this is the second Japanese car that I've rebuilt. Typically I rebuild German and domestic cars and I'm pretty pleased with the way they, the way they go about assembling the cars. Like everything is like normal size bolts, 10, 12, 14 millimeter. Uh, like the, the Ram 2500 I rebuilt a couple months ago, that thing used 15 and 18 millimeters everywhere, and 15 and 18s aren't normal normal size bolts that are or normal size um, normal sizes that are in your standard toolkit. So it's nice to have normal size normal size bolts to work with. And then also the interior is almost completely held together with clips and some Phillips screws. So. It, you just grab a hold of it and yank it and it unclips. There aren't a whole bunch of hidden screws or anything like that or some some weird clips that you have to spend 40 minutes figuring out how it un how it unclips. And another another thing I've found with the Japanese cars is they don't mount um control modules in the floor, which seems like that would be a smart thing not to do and pretty obvious but like the Germans love to mount control modules under the seats and like the Mercedes they love to put them in the passenger floorboard and in the case of Porsche like with the Boxster that I had they're notorious for the drains for the top uh, plugging up and overflowing water into the cabin and the control module under the passenger seat runs the windows and I think the security module and the convertible top and it fries it and a lot of times the car will be totaled because of it. Um, or if you have it fixed at the dealer like my friend did on his, it, you got like a $3,000 bill. And all of that because you mount some control modules on the floor instead of somewhere else. Like, um, like with this car and with the um, in the G37 that I rebuilt, the control modules are in the A-pillar um, or up under the dash. There's nothing on the floor. Genius. But um, so far so good. We're making pretty good progress on it. Um, so hopefully next week I'll keep looking around for some used um, exterior parts in red ideally, but I'm probably gonna have to bite the bullet and just order order new parts from the dealer, the hood, 
fender and bumper cover. All right, so I got in the um, restraint control module. I sun it out and had it flashed. So hopefully when I put it together, I won't have any more airbag warning lights. Uh, so I'll put that back in the, uh, in the back of the center console. And then I can clip everything back in and be able to clear this pile of parts over here. That's all the trim for the interior. And I'll fire it up and see if I've got any warning lights. And I already, a little, a little earlier today, I replaced the um, the airbag sensor that went over here and straightened the straightened the bracket back out and straightened this bracket. Um, so the the um, where did I put it? So that's all the airbag sensor is. Just a little accelerometer. Um, it may have been okay, but they're super cheap and it just plugs in, so better to be safe than sorry. Um. All right, I've got the control module installed and I wanted to check before I put the interior back together if I had any warning lights. So I hooked up my Bluetooth um, OBD link and got it on my tablet when I the first time I tried it, um, I was getting a restraint system passenger disable indicator, which is this little piece of console and the light. So I had to put that in and, and plug it in. And let me see if I go in and tell it to clear codes. Yeah, I had to reconnect with the car. See, I really recommend this OBD, OBD link. Um, so it'll connect to other apps. I've got um, Alpha OBD for Chrysler cars, and that'll allow you to do pretty much anything the dealer can do. And the app that comes with the OBD link, um, it has add-ins. For example, for Mazda, it has an add-in so you can get into the restraint control module, ABS, the adaptive lighting, all that stuff. You can't really do any programming, but it'll at least check for um, trouble codes in those systems. And let's see if it'll connect. All right, connected, go to diagnostics. Yes, yeah, so this is everything with the um, with the Mazda add-in, adaptive front lighting, ABS, body control modules, um, so it can, can check quite a few different systems on the car. So now let's clear that, now that I've got the console piece back in. It. No trouble coats. And no warning light. Awesome. So now I'm good to go. Putting everything back in in the interior. And electrically everything should be fine. I've got the light bulb out, warning lights. I've got the, the driver headlight out, but no, no warning lights otherwise. Knock on wood. I think we're making pretty good progress on this project. Just finished up the interior and got the back trim piece in. 
console. Everything seems to be fitting tight and relatively, uh, gaps seem to be relatively good. So that's a plus. So now that the interior is all done, move on, we'll be moving on to the outside. So that's the next phase of the project. Um, I finally, I bit the bullet last week and just ordered a new bumper cover hood fender from the dealer. That should be in middle of next week. I figured um, I want this thing on the road. I don't, I don't want to wait around for eight months for something to find, to finally find some used parts. Um, so they price match online prices. So it really wasn't that expensive. Um, at the end of the project, I'll, I'll do a, a cost breakdown of the, the whole project and where it sits. Um, so yeah, hopefully in a couple weeks, get it on the road.